Welcome back. Uh, I am pleased to have the, uh, the honor, actually, to introduce our keynote speakers for this milestone event. Um, we are joined this morning by Acting Senior Director for Cybersecurity, Chris Painter, Department of Defense Deputy Secretary Bill Lynn, and Department of Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano. I'm going to read a, just a brief introduction of all of all of our speakers um, and also of our invited guests on the stage, and then they're going to come up uh, in order and speak. And, uh, Acting Senior Director for Cybersecurity, Chris Painter. Christopher Painter is the Acting Director of Cybersecurity for the National Security Staff within the Executive Office of the President. Mr. Painter has been involved in cybersecurity and cybercrime issues for nearly 20 years. Before coming to the White House, Mr. Painter served briefly as the De Deputy Assistant Director of the FBI's Cyber Division and for many years as the Principal Deputy Chief of the U.S. Department of Justice's Computer Crime and Intellectual Property Section. From 1991 to 2000, Mr. Painter was a federal prosecutor in Los Angeles, where he handled some of the most significant pewter cr crime matters in the United States. Deputy Secretary Bill Lynn. Mr. Lynn is the 30th Deputy Secretary of Defense. Mr. Lynn's career has included extensive public service at various levels within government. Mr. Lynn served as the Under Secretary of Defense Com Comptroller from 1997 until 2001, and for four years prior to that, he was the Director of Program Analysis and Evaluation in the Office of Secretary of Defense. Before entering the Department of Defense in 1993, Mr. Lynn served for six years on the staff of Senator Edward Kennedy as liaison to the Senate Armed Services Committee. Secretary Janet Napolitano. Janet Napolitano was sworn in on January 21st, 2009 as the, third, as, excuse me, as the third Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security. Prior to joining the Obama administration, Napolitano was midway through her second term as governor of the state of Arizona. While governor, Napolitano became the first woman to chair the National Governors Association, where she was instrumental in creating the policy, the, excuse me, the Public Safety Task Force and the Homeland Security Advisors Council. We are also joined today on the stage by Deputy Undersecretary Reitinger and Director Sullivan, who are critical to the DHS cyber mission. Deputy Undersecretary Philip Reitinger uh, currently serves uh, as a Dep Undersecretary for the National Protection and Programs Directorate and Director of the National Cybersecurity Center. Reitinger previously served as the Chief Trustworthy Infrastructure Strategist at Microsoft Corporation and was the Deputy Chief of Computer Crime and Intellectual Property Section of the U.S. Department of Justice. Director Mark Sullivan is the Director of the United States Secret Service. Sullivan previously served as the Deputy Director the Assistant Director for the Office of Protective Operations and the Deputy Special Agent in charge of the Counterfeit Division. Please join me in welcoming these distinguished speakers and these distinguished guests to our stage this morning to launch National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Well, good morning. It's a, it's a great honor to be here uh, representing the White House uh, in the kickoff of National Cybersecurity Month. Uh, I want to thank the Department of Homeland Security and the National Cybersecurity Alliance for organizing this event. And I also want to thank uh, Secretary Napolitano and Deputy Secretary Lynn uh, and all of our interagency and uh, state and local and private sector partners, many of whom are here today. I think that the fact that you all are here and your presence and your tireless efforts in this area really shows how important this issue is, not just to our government, but really across the nation to all of us and to our citizens. Uh, I also want to note that I expect later today the President will issue a proclamation declaring October 2009 National Cybersecurity Awareness Month uh, and calling on uh, the people of the United States to observe this month and to observe training and best practices to prepare for it. Uh, this joins uh, proclamations by many uh, of the states and also a resolution by the United States Senate that also indicates how important an issue this is and really a timely issue for us. Now, you've heard, uh, you know, often in these speeches you're supposed to do something to kind of lighten the mood a little bit and to break the ice. And you've heard in the introduction that I've, you know, I'm a lawyer and there are several others of us who are. And you know, I was thinking about telling a lawyer joke, but I found over the years that the problem with lawyer jokes is that uh, lawyers don't think they're funny and non-lawyers don't think they're jokes. Uh, so I will cut beyond that and move right to the speech. Uh, we live really in an extraordinary and exciting time. Uh, computers, networks, and the digital infrastructure offer great promise in the way we communicate, do business, and really affect every aspect of our lives. But at the same time, they present great peril, great peril from those who would attack those networks and victimize our citizens and businesses and steal their information and make their lives more difficult. 
Uh, in his landmark speech back in May, President Obama said, and I quote, it's the great irony of our information age that the very technologies that empower us to create and to build also empower those who would disrupt and destroy. The president in his speech detailed many of those threats, uh, including threats to ordinary Americans who have been victimized by having their identity stolen, having their uh, money taken, their wallets emptied, and really having to, had their lives turned upside down. Uh, he even mentioned in that speech that he himself was a victim during, the, was a victim during his campaign. Uh, and although these threats have, you know, obviously many of you who are the savvy people in the audience, these threats have esoteric names like botnets and malware and viruses and worms, the bottom line is the same. It's causing substantial harm to our citizens and to our businesses and to our government. This led President Obama to conclude during his speech that, and I quote again, the cyber threat is one of the most serious economic and national security threats we face as a nation. Now, it's important for Americans to be educated about these threats, not to scare them. That's not the purpose. But it's people can't really value security and know what to do to prevent things to happen to them if they don't understand what the risks are. And that's one of the things we face in trying to educate the public. But the fact that the risk is real and even growing uh, does not mean that we're helpless to combat it. We can and we are uh, rising to meet this challenge. And, and I go back to what I said before. Again, we are really in an extraordinary and exciting time. Uh, the president in his speech designated cybersecurity as a national priority. He said that our digital infrastructure will be treated as a strategic national asset. For those of us who have been involved in this area for a long time, and I know many in this room have been, uh, and many are veterans of this, uh, you know how important that is, that statement by the president raising this issue both nationally and around the world. He also released the Cyberspace Policy Review a document that is based on the collective input of hundreds of stakeholders from both industry, uh, the government, and the private sector, and, and the public. And that lays out a vision and strategic priorities, both short-term and long-term strategic priorities, for achieving better cybersecurity. Since the time that that report came out and that speech happened, we at the White House have been working with our partners to make that vision a reality and are addressing those priorities that were laid out in the report. On a personal note, as Michael mentioned in the introduction, I've been involved in this area for, uh, for nearly 20 years now. Uh, and in that time, I've seen cybersecurity go from a really kind of a niche concern of a small group of professionals to something that really affects every American. And I can say uh, that I've never been more optimistic about the opportunities ahead and our ability to make substantial and sustained and lasting progress. Now, one of the things that was listed in the report that really ties in with today a key priority was that uh, a national public, both in the speech and in the report, was a national public awareness uh, and education campaign to promote cybersecurity. And that's indeed what brings us here today. Uh, national Cybersecurity Month is an important milestone in what has to be a sustained and continuing process. One theme for this month is that cybersecurity is a shared responsibility, and all of you, I think, know that that is absolutely true. Every American can play a role in making our digital infrastructure more secure. Government, the private sector, academia, and individuals all have a part to play in making sure our data and our networks are safer. Uh, for those of you who are savvy, uh, cyber, cyber savvy uh, in the audience, cyber savvy veterans in the audience, and I tried saying that three times fast, uh, and there are many of you out there, uh, you, you, know, you understand what the threats are, but what you need to do, and what all of us need to do, is communicate that to your friends, colleagues, and family who are not so aware, who don't understand it. And you can do that, I think, by linking to some of the materials that you'll be told about today. Uh, I expect Secretary Napolitano will talk about some tips that consumers can use every day to make us all safer. You need to link to them, link to your social network sites, uh, link to your blog posts, make sure people are aware of that. You are the leaders in this community. These tips are simple steps that people can do that really will make a difference, and they're not happening now, and I think that will really make a difference for all of us. For those of us in government and the private sector, we have much to do, and really, as many of you know, much to do together. Within the federal government, we have come together to an unprecedented degree to cooperate in addressing many of the cybersecurity challenges ahead. Uh, even within the government, this is truly a shared responsibility. Uh, we must leverage core responsibilities in many of the departments of agencies, some of the critical ones, DHS, DOD, and some of the others are here today, but we all must make this a team effort. We've also made significant progress 
on, the, on a number of items that were outlined in the cyberspace policy review. For example, uh, we are moving forward on the development of a national incident response plan. Now, Cybersecurity Awareness Month is about educating people to try to prevent some of these things from happening, but inevitably, some, of, some bad things, some cyber attacks will come, and we need to be able to respond as a country. So it's critically important we have an incident, a comprehensive incident response plan, as we spelled out. DHS has led this effort, working with the White House, and has been working intensively with state and local governments in the private sector, and that's been, there's more to do there, but that's very important in coming up with this comprehensive uh, response to a major cyber incident. Many of you here in the audience uh, have been personally involved in this continuing process, and I want to thank all of you for your support and engagement and look forward to further engagement in the future. Like so many other things in this area, the government cannot do this alone. We have to work with all of you. We're also making progress in developing our international cybersecurity framework and reaching out to a lot of our international partners. Uh, and further, the administration's cybersecurity initiatives continue to be developed with great care and attention to privacy and civil liberties. Among other things, as called for by the president in his speech and in the report, we have designated a privacy and civil liberties official and our new cybersecurity director at the White House to ensure that these issues are forefront in all of our uh, considerations. To close, uh, progress in cybersecurity is dependent on our collective actions. Uh, I encourage all of you to reflect on what can be done to improve cybersecurity at your home, at your organizations, and your businesses. Uh, we can all make a difference if we work together and we have a commitment to making things better. As the President Obama said uh, at, and during his speech again in May, quote, a new world awaits a world of greater security and prosperity if we reach for it, if we lead. Let's reach together. Thanks very much. Thanks uh, very much for uh, including me in this, uh, this event. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you to Secretary Napolitano, Michael Kaiser, National Cybersecurity Alliance. Uh, for your leadership in this, uh, this effort. I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, be here with, uh, on the same stage as Secretary Napolitano. Uh, the last time we uh, spoke in the same place uh, at this, uh, together uh, was on the uh, day of our Senate confirmation hearings. This is uh, a, a, a more positive. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I want to compliment Secretary Napolitano. Uh, her leadership style, her, her no-nonsense attitude is, is well known. Uh, maybe a little less well known, but uh, our exploits as a, as a former mountain climber who braved the Himalayas, uh, climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. I, I think that was good training uh, for your, your government career. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of similarities, the forbidding environment, the tough climbs, the lack of oxygen. So I. I <laughs> I, I, th I think you're, uh, it's not surprising you're doing so well at, at Homeland Security. Uh, I've also had the privilege of working with uh, your deputy, Jane Lute, uh, for many months on, on the deputies committee meetings, and I've enjoyed and I think we've made uh, progress. Uh, I think our Homeland Security is uh, more secure. The American people are safer. Uh, all this is due to the service of the men and women of the Department of Homeland Security and the, and the leadership of secretaries. Napolitano and Lute, and I want to, want to thank you both. The men and women of our two departments work together 20, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year to keep America safe. This includes the critical work of protecting the United States from the cyber threats that endanger our security and our prosperity. Now, I want to be very clear at the outset, it always risks stating the obvious, but I'm the Deputy Secretary of Defense, as such, my focus is on how the Department of Defense protects the Department of Defense and its military networks, the dot mill world. Lead responsibility for protecting federal civilian networks, the dot gov world, belongs to the Department of Homeland Security. And that's how it should be. Likewise, responsibility for protecting our private sector networks, the dot com world, belongs to the private sector and with the help of the Department of Homeland Security in the, as the lead government agency and as your lead partner. That said, I'm here today because I think our experience is instructive. The cybersecurity challenges we face every day at the Defense Department, albeit on a very much larger scale than some, are not unlike those faced by your agencies, your industries, your institutions. 
There's no exaggerating our dependence on our information networks. In our case, a 21st century military that simply cannot function without them. And there's no exaggerating the threat. It's unprecedented in its source, its speed, and its scope. Like you, we're facing cyber attacks from many sources, from teenage hackers to hacker activists to organized crime to industrial spies to foreign intelligence services. Like you, we're seeing these assaults come at astonishing speed, not in hours or minutes or even seconds, but in mill milliseconds at network speed. And like you, we're dealing with the breathtaking scope of these assaults, constant attacks on our networks, most recently the July 4th attacks that targeted government and industry in the United States and South Korea. But our scale in the department is unique. We have hundreds of different organizations. We have 15,000 networks. They're administered by 90,000 personnel. And we have about 3 million employees who use 7 million computers and IT devices. But the lesson is the same. Our vulnerability is shared, and so is our responsibility to address it. We have a responsibility to collaborate within organizations, and that's why the Department of Defense is building a culture of cybersecurity, including certifying all those administrators, training our three million employees to understand that when you log on, you're the front line of our cyber defenses. We're improving our capabilities, building a national cyber range where we can develop new leap ahead cybersecurity technologies. And we're improving our command structure, creating a new military command, the Cyber Command, to better coordinate the day-to-day -day defense of our military networks. We also have a responsibility to collaborate across organizations, across the federal government. Again, DHS has the lead responsibility for protecting federal civilian networks, but whenever DHS asks, we stand ready to help as a partner to rapidly share the latest threat information DOD employees are part of the DHS-led government-wide computer emergency response team, the CERT. DHS employees help us respond to intrusions on defense networks. To strengthen our cyber defenses for the future, we participate in each other's exercises. And to ensure DHS has access to the latest technologies to protect federal networks, we share our own. Indeed, as I've said elsewhere, it would be unwise, indeed irresponsible, if the rest of the government didn't somehow leverage the technical expertise of the Defense Department, including the Defense Information Systems Agency and the National Security Agency. Our challenge, and one we will meet, is to apply that expertise in a way that always upholds and respects civil liberties. We have a responsibility, too, to collaborate beyond government. At DOD, we found innovative ways to par partner with industry to protect sensitive defense information on, on their systems. We're sharing more threat information. Industry is reporting more of their intrusions, and we're working together to help strengthen both of our networks. It's a model of cooperation that we're sharing with DHS as it partners with other, other parts of industry to better protect the nation's critical infrastructure. I would add, we have a responsibility to collaborate with other countries. Many of the cyber attacks on U.S. networks originate overseas. Botnet attacks involve computers all over the world. Protecting ourselves will require that we address complex issues of national sovereignty and international law. But no single country can do that alone. This, I think, is the most important message of this month. No one can do this alone. Government agencies need other government agencies. Government needs industry. We need your ideas, your innovation. And industry needs government for coherent and common sense policies. And countries need other countries. And most of all, everyone, every leader, every employee, in every government, in industry, in academia, we need to understand the vulnerabilities and the responsibilities that we share. And while working together across so many sectors can often be a frustrating and complicated endeavor, I would leave you with this simple observation. It's only 1928. 
By, which, by this I mean we just marked the 100th anniversary of military aviation. In began in 1908. By comparison, this year marks only the 20th anniversary of the World Wide Web. In other words, in terms of cybersecurity, we're still in the era of biplanes and dirigibles. We're still at the dawn of the information age. We still have decades of change and challenge ahead of us. Decades of innovations and technologies we haven't even begun to imagine. To be sure, there will be setbacks and failures along the way. But if history is any guide, this too is a challenge we can meet together and solve together. This too is an opportunity to meet our shared responsibility to protect the American people, their security, their prosperity, and their civil liberties. That is the spirit in which I join you today. That is the spirit that the Department of Defense will bring to this challenge now and in the years to come. And that is the spirit in which I'm proud to introduce our primary partner in this in government, the Department of Homeland Security and its secretary, Secretary Napolitano. Thank you, Bill, and thank you for uh, being such a good uh, partner with us, and uh, thank you to all uh, who share the stage uh, this morning. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, our partners, uh, the National Cybersecurity Alliance, because we are all here today to announce the sixth annual National Cybersecurity Awareness Month to increase public awareness of the need for cybersecurity and encourage greater protection of our nation's cyber infrastructure and cyber systems. Now, last month uh, we, was National Preparedness Month, uh, which was an effort to increase individual and national preparedness and resilience against all kinds of disasters and emergencies. And I had the opportunity uh, to go around the country and to um, ensure or to work with and, ins and uh, make sure that communities really were leaning forward and thinking about the preparation that needs to occur uh, regardless of the incident that manifests itself. Uh, unfortunately, the, the people of American Samoa, in a way, are uh, the first to experience this. And we were uh, just uh, on the phone before this meeting, uh, making sure they were getting the food and medical supplies that they need. Uh, but they had leaned forward. They had preparations. They were literally hit by a tsunami. We are able, as a federal government, working across different departments and branches uh, to assist them. Uh, specifically, there's a C-130 that landed in American Samoa yesterday containing over a million pounds of food uh, uh, for, uh, the, uh, for the island, and uh, others are on their way as we speak. I only mention this to say that when we do these months, uh, it's more than just an announcement. It's really a recommitment uh, to the functions and the missions uh, that we have. And our, and our recommitment today is to cybersecurity, which is a critical part of national preparedness. It is a critical part of our everyday lives and how our society and our economy operate. Uh, we live in a networked world. We communicate through cyber networks. We conduct business through cyber networks. We rely on cyber networks to control and manage transportation, electricity, banking, among the few critical parts of our infrastructure. So it's important that we take collective action to protect these systems from attacks and disruptions, whether deliberate or accidental. Uh, now, as, as has been suggested um, by the previous speakers, everyone has a role to play when it comes to cybersecurity. The federal government, the private sector, small business, state, local, tribal, territorial governments, individuals. So uh, one of the purposes of this month is to communicate that fact, that this is a shared responsibility amongst all Americans as we move forward. And as we've said, at the federal level and at the direction of President Obama, cybersecurity is one of our most urgent priorities. Uh, the administration's approach was outlined in a public address last May. Under the President's plan, the Department of Homeland Security is the leading federal agency when it comes to the civilian government networks, 
the .gov world. Uh, as Bill said, the Department of Defense is the lead agency and should be in the efforts to protect the military networks, the .mil world. Uh, and uh, when it comes to .com and .org, the civilian world, DHS is the lead agency when it comes to liaison, uh, when it comes to working with the private sector on the protection of their infrastructure. And let me just pause a moment there and remind us all that 85% of the nation's critical infrastructure is in private hands. And so our competency, our ability to work across the government to the private and the private to the government is key to the safety and security of our country. Uh, we are working very closely uh, to protect federal civilian networks. Uh, for example, by deploying intrusion detection systems like Einstein and developing next generation systems. Uh, and we also recognize that the Department of Homeland Security with uh, all of these uh, uh, functions now uh, given uh, to us as our major mission areas in this critical arena, uh, that uh, we need even more expertise in the department uh, than uh, we even have right now with the leadership of Phil, I see Bruce McConnell in the audience and others who have, have come join our efforts at the department. So I'm pleased to announce today that uh, we've now been given direct authority to hire up to 1,000 additional cyber specialists within the Department of Homeland Security uh, and uh, to assist and make our efforts more robust and vibrant uh, than they are right, even right now. Uh, the President is intent on equipping this department with the tools it needs to be, build and be a world-class cyber organization. Uh, this authority will assist us in recruiting the best people in the world to come work for us over the next few years as cyber analysts, developers, and engineers. And so, uh, look out. We're coming. Uh, now, uh, where will these new employees go? Well, some will join Phil Reidinger's team at NPPD to strengthen our efforts to protect cyber infrastructure. Uh, others will go to work for Director Mark Sullivan at the Secret Service in combating cyber crime. One of the little known features of the Secret Service uh, is its uh, huge capacity in the cyber crime arena and the number of cases that it actually has been the lead investigative agency on. Uh, we look forward to not only uh, maintaining that capacity, but enlarging it at the, cyber, at the Secret Service as we move forward. Uh, others uh, will assist ICE and our other components in investigative and enforcement efforts. And others still will work in information assurance and other important IT functions across the Department of Homeland Security, which includes 23 different components, and indeed with our other federal partners. Together, uh, our, our, our design is to help us build an, upon an already solid base of knowledge and expertise, uh, and as I said before, uh, really make DHS a world-class center of cybersecurity expertise and experience. Uh, so the new authority we've been given will allow us to be competitive, uh, to be at the lead, at the cutting edge. And uh, when I say competitive, part of that is with uh, some of you all in the private sector, uh, is to bring some of this expertise into the public sector to help us make our nation secure. Now, while these efforts are important, they are but one part of the solution. Uh, what also is needed is a focused effort by the American people and by American business. Individual users and owners, and operators of computers, networks, and cyber systems. Every compromised computer, be it in a home, a business, or a government office, can potentially be used by those who would do us harm. So individuals and in businesses have a clear role to play in preventing cyber attacks and disruptions and increasing resilience. So this month, we're asking you, we're asking every individual and, and, and business to take some simple steps.